House. Uh, Ronald Chapman is a federal defense attorney. And, Ron, maybe you can help me with Lydia just mentioned this expansive view of a charge. Um, I'm not a lawyer, uh, but, but that, that, that does seem to be kind of changing some of the ground rules after the fact. But again, I'm not a lawyer. Your thoughts? This tax charge or this additional tax theory really is the snake eating its own tail. I mean, here's the problem. The allegation is that Donald Trump caused a false business record for the purposes, if you go with the third crime, of a tax violation. That becomes very strange because Michael Cohen uh, reported this as income. This was listed as income to him because it was a reimbursement and he paid it. Um, there really wasn't any connection during the trial that there was any tax violation whatsoever or that there's anything wrong with it. And one of the concerns here is that the judge is allowing that to be potentially argued. Very confusing for the jury and very difficult. I think that these instructions have probably some very good appealable issues in them, but I also do believe the jury is going to get hung up on the caused a false entry. There wasn't very much evidence that that actually occurred. And does it make a, a, a difference, Ron, when you're considering 30 four individual counts. Does that lengthen the time that the jurors will be deliberating? Uh, do they sort of, you know, combine some issues? How, how does that go? In some cases, the jury will start working down the list when they have independent criminal activity uh, to look at. Let's say they've got 34 different uh, counts in a robbery case or something like that. Um, that would require individual consideration. But here, what we have is the same course of conduct charged in 34 different instances, basically. These are all separate payments to be made. I don't believe in this case the jury's really going to need to go down the sheet. I think that they will determine whether whether or not these entries were false, whether the conduct was improper, and whether or not there was a violation of, quote unquote, some other offense. I think that will make deliberations a little shorter. A lot of people are predicting this will be over by uh, the end of the week. Most attorneys I talk to, I think that's probably correct. And honestly, if you guess Friday before Friday after lunch, um, as an attorney, you're probably going to be correct in just about uh, any trial. That seems to be how it works out. Does a speedy decision, if it comes to that by Friday, um, is that good or bad for Donald Trump? I think a speedy decision certainly is good for Donald Trump. Okay. If they decide to convict Donald Trump, what they have to do is look at credibility of Cohen and agree on that, credibility of some of the other witnesses and have some agreement. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of discussion if they're moving towards conviction. If they find Michael Cohen is not credible, there was a jury instruction that said, if you find any of the witnesses lack credibility and specifically lied, you can disregard their entire testimony. Hmm. If that happens, they could be back very quick. Wow, that's interesting. I hadn't thought of it from that way. But with the whole witness testimony, Michael Cohen, for example, just dismiss everything he says. Uh, Ron, thank you very much. Good seeing you. Thank you. Good to see you. Ronald Chapman on all of that.